people, how are you doing? Hope you're having a damn good day. Welcome back to the channel. And today we will be talking about the 4-2-3-1 formation under Paulo Fonseca at the likes of Lille. We'll be going over the tactics, the formation, of course, the, the player instructions and everything and trying to re recreate and replicate a realistic Lille system in FIFA 23. So if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Please subscribe if you are new. That would mean the absolute world to me. So starting off with Jonathan David, of course, he is the, the striker up front. We've got Cabello in behind him. We've got Zagrova as the right winger. We've got Haroldson as the left winger. We've got Gomez as the DM on the left-hand side. We've got Andrea, the captain, of course, at the right side of DM. We've got Diakata. We've got Giallo. We've got Umtiti Ishmali. Of course, we've got Chevalier, a very young 21-year-old goalkeeper that has a huge potential in FIFA 23. We've got Cavaliero. We've got Bayo. We've got Unis. We've got Mir Mirmun. Mir I think it's pronounced Mirmun. I might be wrong, though. But anyways, we've got Jakobek. We've got Santos, Goodmanson, Yoro, Vinginus, Ribeiro, and then Baleba. So just having a look at the formation, of course, it is just a basic 4-2-3-1 narrow formation with one goalkeeper, two centre-backs, two full-backs, two DMs, one cam, two wide midfielders, and then, of course, one striker up front. Now, what I did notice with Apollo Fonseca's system is that he doesn't look to try and press as much, especially if they lose the ball, unless it's very high up the field and the ball is in the possession of the back line or the goalkeeper, of course, only then will they look to um, more or less try and press and create a, a, an issue or a mistake in the back line. So that's why I've gone with pressure on heavy touch because them pressing or pressing after a loss of possession doesn't really work out and it's not a very realistic tactic. Now in order to try and you know press the, the back line on command, obviously you're going to use the D-pad and team press and that will more or less try and flood the, the offensive passing lanes, making sure that they do, you know, put bodies in those lanes and try and win the ball back as fast as possible. But other than that, you are going to more or less be a bit more methodical, a bit more relaxed when out of position with the ball and just wait for the opposition to make a mistake. But more times than not, you just create a lot of havoc by, by putting pressure on them and, and then them forcing so many turnovers and errors. I mean, and the gameplay above literally shows how many errors they, they were creating for themselves, essentially. As for the width, though, it's set to 45, which is just below the, the 50, obviously, 45, 50. But basically, you do want to have this one-to-one -one situation where you are creating a, a 1v1 more times than not. Of course, you do have a very young team, so they can do that. They can put bodies on each other. And, of course, you do want the likes of your, your midfield, too, to be nice and compact in that middle of the park so that there's no balls being played through the, the, the center of the park. But more times than not, you do have a very narrow formation. So you want to try and keep that even slightly narrower than normal in order to remain a very compact unit and hard to break down, of course. And then as for the depth, it is set to 75. Now, they do tend to play a very high line or a, a high mid block, you could say. But if you are playing the likes of a PSG or somebody like that, like maybe a Marseille or so on, maybe drop, just drop it down maybe to around 55, 60. That would help out a lot. But if you are playing the likes of Nantes, for example, he will look to try and implement this system a bit more where it is a very high line looking to try and squeeze the opposition, try and, you know, when they are being forced into those areas and they are hoofing it up the field, your centre-backs, your full-backs and so on are there to win it back as quick as possible, circulating it back into possession and then going again and attacking and attacking and attacking. One thing I will say, though, is there is no long passing that happens or occurs in this team. It's a lot of short, quick, interchangeable passes, which is also why your team is set to such a narrow formation because you want them to be in and around each other in order to fire off a few quick passes and pass it around the, the opposition of course. As for the build up play and the chance creation it is set to slow build up and possession now it goes without saying that Fonseca loves to have this you know possession based style of football like I said earlier the, the quick one two passes short passes in and around it does more or less mean and trigger a possession based style of football so you will look to try and have the ball as much as possible be a bit more calmer with the ball when you get into that final attacking third get Remy Cabello on the ball as much as possible because his passing is very very good in FIFA 23 and he will look to try and be that key to unlock the defense but more importantly you do want to have it set to a 70 width because you do want your fullbacks or your fullback at least in this situation firing crosses into the box of course your wingers as well they want to be nice and stretched out nice wide in those wide areas creating havoc with the crossing ability. Of course, you can fire low balls into the box. You will have a, quite a bit of transition play with the likes of speedy players like Jonathan David, Zagrova. I mean, Remy Cabello is quite pacey himself. So you will have a lot of transition crosses that you will be playing in and more or less crosses along the floor do tend to work out very, very well. So as for players in the box, it is set to seven, which is fairly, fairly high. But the main reason for me doing so is to try and replicate the idea that either or of your defensive midfielders, of course, they will look to try and get forward a little bit and that more or less helps by recreating that and just encouraging them to get forward a bit more, adding another attacking option 
um, in the offensive line, of course. As for corners and free kicks, as per always, my dudes, it is set to fall. So in terms of the instructions, we'll start off with the goalkeeper, Chevalier. He is set to sweep a keeper, of course, and come for crosses. Goes without saying, when you are playing with a very high line, which you will be doing so, um, you do need a sweep keeper, of course, comes for crosses. He is very good at claiming the aerial balls, of course. But more importantly, you do need a keeper that's good with his feet, good with passing, of course, in the likes of the build-up play, um, so, creating that nice platform in order for you to build off of going forward offensively-wise. And, of course, Chevalier does have a really good pass on him where he can afford to beat the offensive players as well as the midfield and just bypass them straight into the front line of your team where he can look to try and you know spring that quick transition attack. Um, as for your two centre-backs going forward, uh, they are set to their base set of instructions. We're going to start off with the right-hand side, move left, of course, with Diakate. He is set to join the attack and overlap, so he will be bombing down that right-hand side, holding the width for your attacking phase at, or your, your attacking player down that right-hand side. Um, so he is going to do that. And as for your left fullback, he is said to stay back while attacking inverts and of course step up. So you do want him to more or less lock down this left-hand side, making it very hard and very physical for the opposition's right wing or right mid or whoever's on that right-hand side. It's going to be a very tough and torrid game for them going forward. But more importantly, he's going to invert and stay back while attacking. So he will look to try and link up with the likes of um, Gomez or Andrea, whichever one bombs forward. You will look for Ishmali to more or less come into that midfield, help with possession, adding another body in there, of course. But mainly he is said to stay back because you do want him to have that solid defensive back three in this team, um, which we see a lot of modern football teams, you know, creating that back three in possession. So you have that extra full back attacking outlet um, when you do go forward. As for Gomez, he is here to cut passing lanes, balanced attack, normal interceptions, deep line playmaker, and of course cover the wing. So basically the main reason, as you can see here, is that uh, Andrea said to the same set of instructions. And the main reason for that is because when the one gets forward, the other one will look to stay back and you do need that. You do want to try and replicate and recreate that effect in FIFA 23 and that's the best way to do so. But at the same time, you do want them to have the ability to drop in between the two centre backs, collect the ball and then drive it on into the midfield. Um, and vice versa for your centre backs, you can manually collect the ball with them and then drive it on into the midfield. And whichever one does do that, you will have either Gomez or Andrea or Ishmaeli dropping into that centre back role um, going forward whilst your centre back is out of position. So you do want to try and replicate and recreate that. Um, sorry, that was a bit of a messy ex explanation, I know, but basically Andrea, he is said to cut passing ends, have a balanced attack, normal interceptions, stick to position and then cover the wing. So he is going to be the, the, the guy who, you know, he's very solid in his positioning, whereas Gomez will look to try and, you know, open up for the ball, run into those little spaces and potentially spray the odd you know, occasional long ball in behind to try and hit the likes of a, a Jonathan David or a Grover or somebody who's transitioning in that attacking phase of play. So moving forward to Remy Cabello, he is set to come back on defense, get into the box, free roam, of course, and then normal interception. So he will look to drop a little bit deeper link up with the likes of Gomez or Andrea. And at the same time, he will also look to try and, you know, be another layer of defense when out of possession. But more importantly, he's going to look to try and hang in and around the likes of well, in and around by the likes of Jonathan David um, by getting into the box, of course. But more importantly, he's set to free roam, and this will look for him to more or less operate in those little half spaces that are created from your wingers. We'll get to their instructions soon enough, but they will look to try and stretch the, the play going forward and as well as open up certain spaces and areas in the field for Cabello to, to work with. And then as for the, the, the right winger, Zagrova, he is set to come back on defense, cut inside, get in behind, and of course get into the box. So he will look to make angled runs. He will look to more or less help the, the fullback, the, um, in this case, it's Diakate. He'll look to try and you know, help him with picking up certain runners on that uh, left-hand side, or right-hand, no, left-hand side for the opposition. Um, but he will also look to cut inside. And this is why Remy Cabello's set of instructions are so important because he's on free row. When Zagrova does look to cut inside, Cabello will vacate that number 10 area and look to operate slightly further wider or maybe he gets pushed a bit further left. So either or it does work out but more importantly the getting behind is very important for this formation to work because you do need your wingers to be able to stretch that um, offensive uh, that defensive back line but more importantly that offensive line that you are creating going forward um, to open up space for the likes of either Gomez, Andrea or Cabello to function in that space when you are progressing the ball into the final third. And then as for Haraldson, he is said to come back on defense, have a balance with getting behind, of course, getting to the box, and then normal interceptions will be on. So he's not going to always look to try and cut inside, whereas the Grover will try and do that as much as possible. 
but he will look to try and hold the, the width on that um, left hand side whereas Ishmaili does not get forward as much. So finally with Jonathan David, he is said to have a balance with getting in behind, normal interceptions and of course stay forward so he will be your focal point, he will look to try and stretch that back line's defense as much as possible with his sheer like crazy pace. Fantastic player, honestly, and then he will have a balance with so he will look to sometimes drift left drift uh, right of course But at the same time he will look to try and take up that central point as much as possible So he will run the channels if balls are fired in and there was a little um, Phase of play where in gameplay that I did not record, but obviously I was trying out the system and everything He made this great run. I think it was Ishmaili who ended up playing it But he played a great ball around the outside of the the, the defense and was like arcing in and Jonathan David made a great arcing run from inside to out and he collected the ball on the left wing and then he was able to drive it into the box. So you will be having more moments like that with the set of tactics with Jonathan David of course. So he will be chasing those long balls or those long passes that are fired into him or into his path at least. Um, so yes, that is the, the instructions for him. And that is that. The Paulo Fonseca 4-2-3-1 set of tactics and formations in FIFA 23. Do me the biggest favor, if you have enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button, it would mean the absolute world to me. Subscribe if you are new to the channel, share the channel if you would like, obviously it's your choice. But more importantly guys, I hope you have the damn, the, the best damn day ever, I'm out.